This is the first topic of Chapter 7, Composition of Air. A pure air, is a mixture of different gases, that can exist in atmosphere. And they cannot be seen, as they are invisible to our eye. The pure air is colorless, odorless, and tasteless. In our surrounding, the air is a mixture of various gases, water vapor, dust, and microorganisms. In general, air is the mixture, made up of the following composition. The first is nitrogen gas, which occupies around 78% of the air in the atmosphere. The second is oxygen gas, which occupies around 21% of the air in the atmosphere. The third is carbon dioxide gas, which occupies around 0.03% of the air, in the atmosphere. The fourth is inert gases, which occupies around 0.97% of the air in the atmosphere. The other component, which is with very low composition in the air, they are water vapor, dust, and microorganism. The inert gases, are the elements arranged in the last group in the periodic table. They are chemically stable, and non-reactive. The following are the example of inert gases, in the air. They are arranged in the group 18, in the periodic table. Helium, is the first element, in the group 18. Neon, is the second element, in the group 18. Argon, is the third element, in the group 18. It is the most abundant inert gas, in the earth. Krypton, is the fourth element, in the group 18. Xenon, is the fifth element, in the group 18. Radon, is the sixth element, in the group 18 of the periodic table. Same as other inert gases, radon is chemically stable, or it is non-reactive. This means that, inert gases will no react with other elements, to form a new compound. But, if compared to others inert gases, radon is radioactive. Radioactive means that, radon has an unstable atomic nucleus. At which, radon will decay to be the lighter element naturally. And, some radiation will be released. In the air, the composition of water vapor, dust, and microorganisms is very low. And, varies with respect to the time, location, and climate. Water vapor in the air can be measured by using the humidity. It is high in the tropical forest, or during the rainfall. It is low in the desert. The dust in the air comes from the soil, and exhaust from factories, and motorized vehicles. Therefore, the amount of dust is higher in the roadway, and industrial area. If compared to the dust in the living area, microorganism in the air, is referring to the bacteria, and virus, that suspended in the air. They have impacts on human health, as they can cause infectious disease. In general, air is a mixture, and it is not a compound, because the components in the air, are physically mixed, and not chemically combined. They can be easily separated, by using the physical method. For example, fractional distillation. Each component retains its original properties, when extracted from the air. The proportion of each component is not fixed, and varies with time, and location on the earth. The air can be obtained, by mixing the components together, in the right ratio. Without any energy ch and chemical reaction. This is the full explanation of Topic 1, Composition of Air. This topic, we will study, the importance of gases. Every gas in the air, has played an important role in our daily life. The gases, existed in the air, is as follows. Nitrogen gas, which occupies the 78% of the air composition. Oxygen gas, which occupies the 21% of the air composition. Carbon dioxide gas, which occupies the 0.03% of the air composition. And inert gases, which occupy the 0.97% of the air composition. The role of each gases, will be discussed in the following part of the video. We first talk about the nitrogen gas. Liquid nitrogen is used as cooling agent, to store ova, or embryos. 
nitrogen is used to produce ammonia, and nitric acid. Nitrogen gas is used to purge into food, to displace the oxygen from package. This is to prevent the food, from oxidation by oxygen. About the oxygen gas in the atmosphere. It is an essential element, required by living things to breath. The digested food, can be oxidized, through the cellular respiration. And, converted to the chemical energy, that required by living thing. The patient with breathing difficulty, is supplied with oxygen in the hospital. Oxygen is stored in cylinders, and being used by the astronauts in the space. And sea diver in the deep sea. Oxygen is an essential element for combustion process. Oxygen is required for the combustion of fossil fuel and power station, for electricity generation. It's required for the combustion of natural gas, for cooking in the kitchen. About the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is an essential element for green plants, to carry out photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is used in fire extinguisher to extinguish the fire. Carbon dioxide is used in carbonated drink to produce the fizz effects. Carbon dioxide is compressed into solid as dry ice. Which used in food industries, to make ice cream, and ensure the freshness of food. Carbon dioxide in the liquid state, is used to produce decaffeinated coffee. This is about the use of inert gas in our daily life. Helium gas is low in density, and is used to fill weather balloons, and airships. Neon gas is often used in signboard lightings, to produce bright reddish-orange light. Argon gas is filled in filament bowl to prevent metal filament from burning with oxygen. This is to prolong the filament life. Krypton gas is used in photographic flashes, fluorescent light bulbs. Xenon gas is used in photographic flashes, and used as an anesthetic in surgery. Radon gas is radioactive, and is used to treat cancer illness. This is about the importance of gases. Now, we talk about the carbon, and oxygen cycles. The carbon cycle is the cycle, that continuously consumes, and releases carbon into the atmosphere. The processes such as photosynthesis, respiration, combustion, and decomposition are the processes in the carbon cycle, to maintain the carbon content in the earth. The content of carbon dioxide, is maintained by the processes at a level of 0.03% in the atmosphere, continuously consuming it from the air, and release it into the air. The oxygen cycle is the cycle that continuously consumes, and releases oxygen into the atmosphere. Oxygen that released by photosynthesis is consumed by respiration, combustion, rusting, and decomposition. At the meantime, respiration, combustion, rusting, and decomposition are releasing the carbon dioxide, that required by photosynthesis. This is the full content of topic, the carbon and oxygen cycles. Now, let's us discuss, how to prevent interruption in oxygen, and carbon cycles. The oxygen, and carbon cycles, play an important role in maintaining the percentage of oxygen, and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, to achieve the carbon-oxygen balance. Nowadays, and carbon cycles are disrupted due to human activity that causes the increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere high amount of carbon dioxide have been released from factories burning of fossil fuel exhaust of motor vehicle forest fires and open burnings at the meantime illegal logging and deforestation have been carried out widely on earth for the development of various facilities infrastructure and agriculture these activities cause the fewer tree to release oxygen and absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere during photosynthesis. As a result of the above mentioned issue, oxygen content in atmosphere decrease, while carbon dioxide content increase. This is interruptions in the oxygen and carbon cycles. The increase in carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere causes global warming and climate change.
ecosystems will be disrupted, if the situation remains uncontrolled. The measures, to prevent interruptions in the oxygen, and carbon cycles, is as following. The first is, prohibition of illegal logging. The second is, stop forest burning and open burning. The third is, preventing forest fires. The fourth is, forest preservation and conservation. The fifth is, trees replantation. The sixth is, preventing harmful exhaust gas from vehicles. The discussion for topic, prevent interruption in oxygen, and carbon cycles, end here. And we have just completed the lesson of topic 1, composition of air. Thank you.